recently showed you this video game, Iranian gunmen shooting at U.S. soldiers who captured Iranian nuclear scientists. This is just one of many virtual realities where the terrorists are in charge and creating chaos. But now, one game is looking to portray a new world order, literally. Israeli and American computer programmers have created a novel solution for peace in the Middle East conflict, and they are calling it Peacemaker. Eric Stackelbeck is a former analyst with the investigative project on terrorism and now covers terrorism and security issues for the Christian Broadcasting Network. Eric, it's always good to have you with us. Welcome back. Hey, good to be back, Mark. You know, let's take a look through. I want to take everybody through this game. It's very interesting, and I watched it this morning. The first thing that you do is uh, choose who you're going to play at. It's either the Palestinian right. president or Israeli prime minister or a random leader. So you click on that, and we did Israeli prime minister this morning, and that takes you to the next thing where you pick a level of intensity. You can pick, you know, most violent uh, in that case, as you see at the bottom there, and then it goes out to a wide map that basically shows you the area and zooms in, and then it kind of lets you tick off an area, a hot spot, and you can watch mm -hmm. the explosion kind of take place, and then you have to sort of figure out what you would do in their shoes to try to solve the situation. What, do you, what does this remind you of? You know, one of the one, it reminds me of the game of Risk. If yeah. you remember the game of Risk, the board game yeah. when we were growing up, uh, it reminds you of a high-tech game of Risk, a modern-day game of Risk. Um, one of the interesting things here, Martha, is this comes up uh, in real time on this game. You'll have footage come up that hey, there was a suicide bombing in Jerusalem, right. 18 people killed. It's actually real, actual footage from from the archives. So it really gives it a real-time, realistic feel. It really gives you a you are there type of feel. And hey, look, these guys, as you mentioned in the intro, they actually have good intentions. A lot of times we've seen these video games, the web, corrupted by jihadis. These guys, one of, one of the creators is a former Israeli intel officer. They actually have good intentions here. Right. Uh, they're, they're promoting peace with this game. Uh, but, but like you said, the realism of the game is really striking. It's a wave of the future, I guess. And then, you know, as the leader, you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you just going to increase security or are you going to launch a missile attack in retaliation? And all those choices are given to you. And then in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see the two flags and it shows you how your approval rating basically goes up or down in the Palestinian territories and in Israel to try to negotiate through all this. Do you think there's any way though, Eric, that this might be misused? You know, Martha, I do. Unfortunately, as we've seen in the past, the jihadis find a way to misuse literally everything, whether it's the web, whether it's a rap video, a jihadi rap video. They find a way to abuse everything, it seems, and turn it into a propaganda tool. Now, I can see then this game, as I said, well-intentioned, but you have to wonder, the jihadis right now are so technologically savvy. What's stopping them from forming little groups uh, that play this game that kind of make even bootleg or pirated copies of this video game that show violent scenarios like, say, Israel being nuked or something of that nature, the destruction of Israel, hacking in, making that an option. I'm not a video game expert, you would, but you would think with Al-Qaeda being so technologically savvy now, they could find a way, not, not only Al-Qaeda, but Hezbollah, Hamas in that Israel region, you, they could find a way to corrupt this game, use it as a propaganda tool and use it to right. fulfill some of their sickest uh, anti-Israel fantasies. Yeah, you know, it's definitely well-intentioned. It's the first video game that we know of that has Hebrew, Arabic, and English translations, uh, so all sides can get involved in trying to find a solution for peace. Eric Sackelbeck, thank you very much. Always good to thank have you. Thank you, Martha.